Hello, my name is Leslie Collum, and along with Corey Wells, I am co-president of the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to these candidate forums, sponsored by the League in partnership with Murfreesboro City TV and the Murfreesboro City Cable Commission. The League believes that candidate forums provide an excellent way for voters to become more familiar with candidates and their positions. We appreciate the support of the City of Murfreesboro, including the Cable Commission, Communications Director Alan Bozeman, and his staff. Their work enables broadcasting and streaming of the forums to reach a much larger number of voters. The League seeks to conduct the forums in a fair and unbiased manner, which does not favor any particular candidate or political party. Key participants, especially the moderator, are not publicly aligned with any candidate. We are pleased to have Dr. Abigail Gautreau as moderator for these forums. Dr. Gautreau is a research fellow with the Center for Historic Preservation at Middle Tennessee State University, and her interests include civil rights, the Voting Rights Act, and community projects to preserve and share cultural heritage. In the August election, you will be voting for candidates who will serve in a variety of roles. We invited all the candidates running in contested general races to participate, and due to the importance of the office, we also invited all the city council candidates to participate, even though they are running unopposed. You will hear from the candidates in the races in which the majority of those running were able to participate. We hope you find these forms useful in deciding which candidates you choose to support. Your vote gives you a great opportunity to influence how government is conducted in Murfreesboro. Please make your decision known by voting. Watching world events makes us appreciate our democracy and how vital citizen participation is. Thank you for joining us, and remember, your vote counts. Good evening, I'm Abigail Gotro, and I will serve as moderator for this candidate forum. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Murfreesboro, Rutherford County, and the Murfreesboro City Cable Commission. It is my pleasure to welcome both our audience here at City Hall and our viewers at home to our program. In this forum, we'll be hearing remarks from the candidates from Murfreesboro City School Board. Before introducing the candidates, I would like to outline the procedure for the forum. Each candidate will be asked to make an opening statement and then answer the first question in a two-minute period. When all candidates have completed the opening statement and the first question, then several additional questions will be asked. The candidates will respond to each of those questions with a one-minute answer. The candidates will be allowed two minutes to answer the last question and make any closing remarks. I will begin by introducing the candidates. They are each seeking election to a position that is important to the citizens of Murfreesboro. I want to thank them for their gracious acceptance of their, our invitation to participate in this event. Speaking first is Mr. Wes Ballard. Mr. Ballard, you may make your opening statement and answer the following question. What changes would improve city schools and how could those changes be implemented? You will have two minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks to the League of Women Voters for uh, entertaining us tonight with this uh, opportunity to speak to the citizens of Murfreesboro. Uh, I am Wesley Ballard. I've lived in Murfreesboro for 33 years now as I uh, relocated from Knoxville to join Nissan as quality assurance engineer. I retired from Nissan as the director of product quality assurance for the Smyrna plant. I attended the UT, UT Knoxville and graduated from MTSU in industrial technology. I've been married for 39 years to my wife, Zaza, and I have two grown sons, and we attend World Outreach Church and live in North Murfreesboro in North Woods. I was a member of the Nissan Corporate Contributions Committee, member of the Nissan Directors Council, and member of the Corporate Management Committee, and I served as a board member of the United Way of Rutherford County, and also Rutherford and Cannon Counties, and I'm assisting the Business Education Partnership in the outreach to city schools and county schools, uh, and I've also enjoyed substituting uh, in the city schools for the last two years. I have a strong desire to be involved in the future of education in our community. I feel strong that I should give back to this community, which I've lived and prospered in. 
I feel my corporate experience offers fresh thinking for the future planning. Thank you for the opportunity to appear, and thank you. For, I'm honored to be and pleased to be at this table with people that are willing to serve because we all care about the future of education in our community. Thank you. Oh, the, the question. Could you repeat the question for me, please? Yes, sir. Uh, what Do I get another minute for that? <laughs> 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 oh, I, okay, I misunderstood that. Okay, go ahead. What changes would improve city schools, and how could those changes be implemented? Okay, I'm going to, there's a big shopping list there. I'm going to say that the, probably the biggest change that could uh, to help out is to understand what our needs are going to be going forward with the, the population explosion in Murfreesboro and plan for that so that we have the right kind of zoning and right kind of distribution of students and te teacher ratio in the schools. Thank you. Okay, next we have Mr. Jared Barrett. Uh, Mr. Barrett, uh, please introduce yourself and uh, answer the question, what changes would improve city schools and how could those changes be implemented? Thank you, and thank you to the League for hosting our forum this evening. Uh, my name is Jared Barrett. I'm running for re-election to the Murfreesboro City School Board. Um, my, wife, my wife of almost 10 years, Amber Barrett, and our two children, two-year-old Annabelle and Olivia, I've lived here for almost 13 years over on the west side of town by Case and Lane area. Uh, I'm an archaeologist. I work in Nashville. I work for TRC Environmental Corporation. And I've also served on both the Rutherford County Board of Zoning Appeals and the Beer Board. I want to continue to manage our growth and be a voice for teachers, parents, and students uh, on the board and answer the question about what can changes that we could do. Um, one that we've always been struggling with, we continue to struggle with, is increased parent parent involvement. Uh, I've been to several meetings, especially when we did the rezoning. Um, we really had a lack of parent involvement, and it was really sad. And it was really it was kind of, it was a sad situation to see that. Um, I wish more parents would have took the opportunity to come to those forums and see what was going on, and, and maybe introduce themselves to the parents and or to the teachers and the principals of their new school. Uh, and another thing would be, you know, one way we could do this through outreach programs is getting out in the neighborhoods. I know we do that at Hobgood currently during the school year. They're getting out into the neighborhoods, and, and the teachers are walking the neighborhoods and introduce themselves. So that's one way, one way we could do that. Another area that we could do, and I'm currently working on, is capital improvement plans, trying to come up with a five-year plan for our, for our city budgeting, uh, for our school, bud school budget budgeting. Uh, and we're currently working on that. It's a work in progress. With all the growth, it's really hard to map that from year to year, but we're, we're working on that. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next we have uh, Mr. Butch Campbell. Mr. Campbell, if you'd please introduce yourself and tell us what changes you would make, what changes would improve city schools and how those changes could be implemented. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And thanks to the League of Women Voters for the forum tonight. My name is Butch Campbell. I'm a lifelong resident of Murfreesboro. I attended Murfreesboro City Schools, went to the eighth grade through Mitchell Nelson, and from there went to Murfreesboro Central High School, graduating in 1963. I married my high school sweetheart, Janie Abernathy, in January of 1964. We've been married for 52 wonderful years so far. I have two children, two boys. One is Rich Campbell, who teaches kindergarten at Irma Siegel Elementary School. And my youngest son, Chris, does lawn care work after a successful career as a social worker in helping young people. I started teaching school in 1964 at Bradley School with eighth grade students. After one year at Bradley, went to, went to a middle school. I stayed there until 1972 when Central Middle School opened and Murfreesboro City Schools got out of educating seventh and eighth grade students. There I coached football, basketball, I taught social studies. In 1978, I went to Walter Hill School as principal and retired there after 31 years of experience. I attend First Baptist Church where I'm a deacon. I operate the clock for all MTSU basketball games since 1977. I've officiated high school football and basketball and also youth basketball, football, and baseball and was inducted into the TSSAA Hall of Fame in 19, I'm sorry, in 2012. 
I have served on the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Board, a volunteer at St. Thomas Hospital. I've been on the board for eight years and would like to see us be able to continue doing the wonderful work that we are doing. I will agree that we would love to have more parent involvement and perhaps uh, selling the program of Murfreesboro City Schools to the general public. We are a very proactive board. We have a proactive school system with wonderful teachers and all other personnel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Uh, next, we have Ms. Navonda Lilly. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us what changes would improve city schools and how those changes could be implemented. My name is Navonda Lilly, and I'm a native of Nashville, Tennessee. I've been a, a resident of Murfreesboro for 14 years. I have five children. I serve as the assistant director for talent acquisition for Vanderbilt University Medical Center. I am passionate about supporting the transfer of knowledge from teachers to students, and I'm also passionate about serving the youth in our community. My 20 plus years in human resources will prove to be a valuable asset to the board. I am honored to be a candidate for the Murfreesboro City School Board and I am passionate about supporting our community and being a voice for parents, teachers and students. And to answer the question, I think the, uh, there's an opportunity to enhance collaboration with parents in our community by surveying parents and asking them what are the needs in our community and how can we better serve the community through the partnership with the school system and then implementing a process um, to address some of those recommendations. And the focus of the survey would be on retaining families within our city schools. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. Um, next, we have Mr. David Settles. Mr. Settles, uh, what changes would improve city schools and how could those changes be implemented? And of course, please take your time to introduce yourself as well. Thank you. I'm David Settles. I'm a local pastor, business uh, manager, and local community activist here in Murfreesboro. My home is Nashville, Tennessee. We've lived here for 13 years. My children uh, did, of course, attend the very fine Murfreesboro City School System, so we're very proud of that. Uh, been working in the community in areas of teaching students. Uh, parents how to advocate on behalf of their children, which I think everybody's kind of hit on is the parent involvement piece. I think it is important for parents to be involved in the education of their children, and this is how we improve the school system. We have a very good school system. We have a good board. Um, I think the piece that may be weak is the parent involvement piece. How does that happen? I think Jared hit on it earlier that we have to get out. We have to make ourselves visible. We have to sometimes beat the streets, knock doors, whatever it takes to let parents know that we're concerned about their involvement in their students' uh, lives. Uh, this is a very crucial part of even what I do as a community advocate and listening to the concerns of the community and making them our concerns, uh, listening to what their needs are and making them our needs and making it visible so that we can better serve the communities that we are serving. Our city is growing. Our city is growing and growing fast. So we have to be open to become more diverse to meet the needs of those that are coming into our communities so that everyone is well served. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for this wonderful forum. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, we will now turn to our next question. That question will answer, be answered first by Mr. Barrett. Um, you will have one minute to answer this question. Uh, how should the school board determine its priorities if all its goals cannot be reached? Well, a lot of times we'll have um, retreats as a board and we'll, we'll get together uh, either at central office or MTSU and uh, we'll talk about it openly about you know what our goals should be as a board and sometimes we don't we don't come together as you know we might have a little disagreement there but at the end of the day there's seven of us and we have to come together as a board and 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 move forward with the decision whether we agree with it or not we have to stand united and we have done that on numerous occasions i know there's been a few times where i've disagreed with some of the decisions but once we've made that vote i've moved on you know we get behind each other and we move on and we go forward Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Campbell, um, how should the school board determine its priorities if all its goals cannot be reached? We have to take a lot of things in consideration, and certainly growth is one of those things. Certainly our diverse student body within the city schools, we have to determine what that is. All of these things will help to set priorities on things that need to be done. At the same time, we need to make sure that we are 
following the guidelines that are set forth to us, not only by the State Board of Education, but also the federal government as well. And as anybody knows, those things have to be adhered to in order to be successful. We, like Jared said, we do have retreats and we do talk and we do have an opportunity to uh, collaborate with each other and determine those things, but a lot of our priorities have to be set by things that are going on within our school system and also within our city at the same time and our student population. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Ms. Lilly, uh, how should the school board determine its priorities if all its goals cannot be reached? So first we would need to review all of the pri all of the um, we would first need to review all of the priorities and then determine which one needs to be addressed first. So for instance, if funding is an issue, if testing is an issue, then look at those from a um, realistic viewpoint to determine which one needs to have the most important focus and then determine and agree upon as a board which focus or which items will be priority. And then from there, reviewing those with a focus on the best interests of the students, the teachers, and the parents as a whole. So really determine what are the top priorities for the school system, knowing that you may not be able to meet all of those priorities, but then determining which one needs to happen first, and then addressing those in that particular order. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. Mr. Settles, how should the school board determine its priorities if all its goals cannot be reached? Thank you. If elected, I would be uh, a very junior or new member to the board, so a lot of mine would come from listening to those that have been on the board before, Mr. Campbell, uh, Mr. Barrett, and others that have already been on the board, so you kind of lean to their guidance on a lot of issues. My first priority, of course, is always the children. I got involved in the race for city school board because I have a concern for the children of our community. So I always make children my top priority as far as their education is concerned. Uh, we are concerned definitely with the administrators, the teachers, and everyone that deals with the children, children being the first priority. So we, I, I kind of lean toward what is going to be best for the children and how we can make uh, better strides in educating them, giving them the quality that they need while still addressing the needs of the teachers and the administrators and those that are dealing with our children. So I, I've, I kind of follow, would like to follow what or to learn from those that have already been on the board that can help guide and give me some instruction on how to be a better uh, board member. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, Mr. Ballard, how should the school determine its priorities and if all its goals cannot be reached? Well, I think it's, it's important to identify the priorities, as, as Ms. Lilly said, the ones that you can focus on and achieve. A priority that you set for yourself that you can't achieve is a wasteful time and wasteful priority. So we need to make sure that we can set priorities based on indicators that are measurable and be able to stay focused on those. Instead of having 15 or 20 priorities, let's have three or four or five that we know are achievable. So again, I've got some learning to do, but as, as a using a management system that I would be familiar with, I would say let's, let's identify what we can do and get that done and make sure that those are the priorities that are providing for the children. Number one, keeping in mind always the safety of the schools in the classroom and also keeping the classroom equipped and well prepared and also the teachers well trained and ready and supported to do their jobs. So priorities are set not in mass in masses but in small chunks and then you stay with them. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. We will now turn to our next question. This question will be answered first by Mr. Campbell. Uh, you will have one minute to answer this question. If it were up to you, how do you think classroom teachers and city school administrators should be evaluated? Classroom teachers need to be evaluated by the building level principal. They are the people that are with those teachers each and every day. They know what they're doing every day, and they have the opportunity to do so. Uh, that principal can do so by either a method that is set forth by the state or a method that that principal sets forth by on their own. Principals should be evaluated primarily by the director of schools because that is the person that they are responsible to in the long run and that is the person that needs to do that evaluating. That is the way that our principals are evaluated and our teachers 
have not always been evaluated just by the building level principal, but in my opinion, that's the person that's with them every day and that's the one that knows what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Ms. Lilly, if it were up to you, how do you think classroom teachers and city school administrators should be evaluated? I think teachers um, should be evaluated, in my opinion, by the outcomes and how they are producing as a school. Because if the teachers are transferring the knowledge to the students, then the students should actually be, it should be uh, visible in the results that the students are making in reference to if you're testing the students at the beginning of the school year, you're assessing those students, and then you're reevaluating to determine how the students are progressing during the school year. So I do think that those scores should be included in the teacher's evaluation um, because it does show that the, that the students are retaining. It will also give the teacher an opportunity to identify what areas of improvement may be needed for the students as well. In addition to that, the principals, administrators, should be evaluated by how their school is um, doing in comparison to the other schools within the school system as well. Um, you have to have a way to ensure that students are retaining the information and have a measurable tool to be able to show that progression for the students. So I think that that would be my recommendation in my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. Mr. Settles, if it were up to you, how do you think classroom teachers and city school administrators should be evaluated? Thank you. Um, I think that we need to look at more than simply testing. I think we also need to go according to the goals because one met metric of, of, the student, of the teacher's success is how the students are doing, but also if we have a goal like we spoke earlier of greater parent involvement, I think we should look at that as well. I think it should be evaluated as Mr. Uh, Campbell stated, it should be evaluated by the principal, the school level principal who works with these teachers every day. They see what they do, they interact with them, they know their strengths, their weaknesses. But I think it should be a, uh, a, a combined uh, evaluation that doesn't just look at scores, but also what the teachers are doing in the classroom to meet the goals of the school and of the district. Same way with the principals. The principals uh, evaluation I think should be uh, F come from the the progress of the school, how the school is progressing, how the students are learning, how the teachers are meeting the goals of the district as well, so that it's more fair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, Mr. Ballard, if it were up to you, how do you think classroom teachers and city school administrators should be evaluated? Well, I would take the, uh, I would think that I would want to take the, establish the key performance indicators for the director and then from that point cascade that down to the to the principals and to the teachers and through the administration. Uh, and, uh, if she has a key performance indicator to meet the budget, then that's a, then she's going to meet the budget by cascading that down through the rank and file to make sure that each one of those areas, each one of those departments are meeting their budgets. So, but the, they have to be measurable and they have to be reviewed periodically so that everyone knows where they're moving, whether we're moving in the right direction or whether we're, we're slipping away from the key performance indicators. So outcomes with, per, with periodic reviews are most important and no surprises at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. And finally, Mr. Barrett, if it were up to you, how do you think classroom teachers and city school administrators should be evaluated? Well, currently, much of our evaluations dictate, dictated by the State Department of Education. So my ideal would be, it would be like Mr. Campbell said, the principal would evaluate the teacher. Test scores would not be in factor that. Uh, the district or the school scores wouldn't affect that teacher's evaluation. It would just be the principal evaluating the teacher on their merits of whether or not they can teach those children in the classroom. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. We will now turn to our next question. The first question will be answered by Ms. <coughs> Lilly. Ms. Lilly, in your opinion, what are currently the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the Murfreesboro City School System? You will have one minute to respond to the question. 
In my opinion, the greatest strength in our Murfreesboro City School System are our teachers. Our administrators, we have great teachers, we have great administrators. We do have an opportunity to enhance the involvement in the community to ensure that we're listening to our parents and the community and an opportunity to retain families within our school system. We need to identify if we have families that are exiting the Murfreesboro City School System, whether they're to go to private schools or they're in favor of charter schools. We need to understand why would a parent choose to, to leave the Murfreesboro City School System. And when we can understand the reason behind why we lose parents, then we can focus on how we can implement processes and procedures to uh, retain those families within our city school system. So we have excellent teachers, excellent administrators, and we have an opportunity to enhance our collaboration within our community uh, to listen and understand the needs of our parents. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. Uh, Mr. Settles, in your opinion, what are currently the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the Murfreesboro City School System? Thank you. I think uh, one of the greatest strengths that we have in our school system is the diversity that's offered uh, at several of our schools uh, that have been able to kind of explore different areas as far as education are concerned. Uh, our teachers, from my opinion and the way that I see it, uh, have been giving, given a great opportunity to teach the students in ways that are reaching them that are very uh, measurable. I think one of our opportunities is going to be, again, the involvement of parents in every uh, area of the school district, not just in some parts of the city, but in every part of the city. So that's a challenge. Uh, again, we have people coming in with uh, diverse backgrounds, and I think that one of the challenges or one of the opportunities for the school system would be to reach those parents and get them involved, get them to buy into the school system so that they feel a part and community with us as well as uh, a student improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, Mr. Ballard, in your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the Murfreesboro City School System? Well, again, I'll echo Ms. Lilly. I, I, far and away, the greatest strength are the teachers and the staffs of the individual schools. Uh, I've had the good fortune of doing some substitute teaching, and I've seen been on the noisy side of the firewall, so that's an automotive term, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've seen what these people do and, and what they patch together on a moment's notice and trying to take care of things with ten plates spinning in the air at the same time, and that's an old refer Ed Sullivan reference there. <laughs> so, but the, so teachers and staffs, the weakness would be, I think, in consistency of technology. Uh, we're going to be challenged to keep up with technology as we go forward. And being able to be consistent across the schools with the technology that's available to the students and the teachers, I see is very important and very needed. Uh, if Classroom A has, uh, you know, Nissan Infiniti technology level and you go to the next school and it's got a Ford Fiesta uh, technology, that's no good. So we got to keep up with that and make it level across the board. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Mr. Barrett, in your opinion, what are the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses of the Murfreesboro City School System? Well, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's our students, teachers, staff, and, and our parents. Uh, we have a great, caring staff. I've seen it throughout my four years serving on the board. They generally love our students. They want them to succeed. You know, and I've seen I've seen that a day day in, day out, and I think that's just so great to see that. Our greatest weakness, and I said it earlier, is, is, is our parent involvement, and it's an issue not in our, only in our district, but statewide and countrywide. It's just it's really hard to get parents involved. A lot of parents are busy. A lot of parents have uh, work things going on, but you know we're continuing to, as a district. We're continuing to work on that, and we're going to continue to work on that. And one thing I alluded to earlier was our Hobgood outreach. They have a good program where beginning of the school year they get out in the community and they go door to door with the teachers and they try to introduce themselves to the parents and let them know that they're there and they're ready to help their children learn. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. And finally, uh, Mr. Campbell, in your opinion, what are currently the greatest strengths and greatest weaknesses in the Murfreesboro City School System? I believe our greatest strengths are our personnel, and I'm talking about not only principals and teachers, but I'm also talking about uh, the cafeteria ladies or gentlemen, the custodians, uh, the educational assistants, everybody that's in that building every day is a strength for our student body within the school. We also have a strong w uh, strength in our uh, collaboration with our city council. They have been very supportive and they have helped in a lot of ways down through the years through the financial burdens that we all 
uh, have faced as well. Weaknesses, probably uh, some parent involvement. I'd like to see that get better. Uh, I would like to see us be able to uh, do more with our diverse population of students and, and the different aspects of each one that they have and some of the things that they face at home we, if we can help. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. We will now turn to our next question. That question will be answered first by Mr. Settles. You will have one minute to answer this question. What qualities do you think are most important in selecting a director of schools? Qualities most important in selecting director of schools. Um, I think that they should have a background in helping. I think they should have a servant heart and should have the interest of the students at heart as well as the teachers. More importantly, especially with dealing with the teacher part of it because they're going to have to understand what it means and how it feels. So I think the director of schools, which is, we have a very good director, Dr. Linda Gilbert. I think she's a good director. I met her before on a couple of occasions and I like her vision and I like her hands-on approach to a lot of the issues that are faced in our schools. So I think when we're looking at a director position, you're looking at somebody that has to handle, as I do um, in my position of manager, you have to handle the customers as well as the employees, and you have to have, have to be able to deal with both of them and kind of walk a tightrope, heavy as the head that wears the crown, but uh, we look for somebody, I would think, that has the ability to balance those two and come to a resolution positive. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, Mr. Ballard, what qualities do you think are most important in selecting a director of schools? I think um, certainly experience, uh, that goes without saying really, but and experience at, uh, at that level. Uh, if we were to go out and seek a new, new director, uh, I would want that director to have experience as in that chair as, that op as a director. And then also, they, uh, as Mr. Settle said, uh, the ability to have the human touch. And I think that's the most important, have the human touch and have the ability to listen and be willing to go into the rank and file and work with them as far as understanding the needs of the teacher, the needs of the where the rubber meets the road. And also working with, uh, they have to be talented to work up and down the ladder because working with the, the uh, school board. But mostly the experience, and again, this is an area where I would have to listen to my colleagues on the board to understand exactly what it is that we would be searching for and then help search for that person. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Uh, Mr. Barrett, what qualities do you think are most important in selecting a director of schools? Well, again, experience, like Mr. Ballard said, a willingness to listen to everyone in the all stakeholders in our community, solid educational background that goes without saying, uh, collaboration with our community organizations. We have a lot of good organizations here in, in Murfreesboro, MTSU, a lot of our business partnerships, and hopefully they would be able to bring that to continue with that. Um, experience, you know, we already said experience, but looking out for all our children, uh, and this includes our special ed, our gifted, our English as second learners. Uh, we have a very diverse student population, and they're going to need to know how to deal each with those different groups separately and how to deal with them together because ultimately they're all in the same schools. So it's just going to have to, you know, how to manage that and how to do it effectively. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Campbell, what qualities do you think are most important in selecting a director of schools? Certainly, I think one of the major things is their background, what they have been involved in, what they have done, how they have worked in, with, in the education uh, philosophy and the educational system, wherever they might have been before. Their involvement with the students and their promotion of ideals and new programs also, their individuality, where they can be an individual and, and uh, work with their staff, the staff that they have or the staff that they might have later on. The availability, I think, is also important. And certainly our director of schools today is available pretty much 24 hours a day if anybody needs her. And teachers know how to get in touch with her, and so do board members. Uh, but I think... Uh, background, love of children, dedication to children, and being able to help to promote teachers and all the staff that are involved with the students as well. 
Thank you, Mr. Campbell. And finally, Ms. Lilly, what qualities do you think are most important in selecting a director of schools? The qualities that I think are most important is someone that's a strong leader, a visionary, customer service focus, accustomed to change, ability to co collaborate and influence change, broad range of experience in education, compassionate, has budget experience, and values diversity. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. We'll now turn to our final question. Uh, this question will be answered first by Mr. Ballard. And as a reminder, you have two minutes so you can answer the question and make any closing remarks that you have. Uh, so Mr. Ballard, the question is, uh, what makes you the candidate to vote for? Hmm. Well, I think, it, it, again, I've, uh, I have always stressed the balance of the, the board. The board is a fine uh, working group right now. I would definitely think that I have the experience, the business experience and the, the acumen to come in and sit on the board and review things with the board and make decisions that are appropriate in the ways of spending, in the ways of environmental, in the ways of, of uh, safety, all of the things, and, and, and also in federal and state issues. But um, I think that that would, and, and my desire to work in the community again and give back. Uh, I had 33 years in automotive and I've had uh, a great career with Nissan and I've prospered here and I feel wonderful about being able to use my time to get back into the community and help the students and raise the, make sure that we're preparing these, these students for the next level of education so that we are preparing students that are going to stay within this community and they're going to be able to support the growth of the community by providing workforces for the hopefully the growth of industry and um, businesses that will flow into Rutherford County and that's that's really truly important to me to be able to have educated students that will be able to go out and meet the requirements of the employers up the up the pay scale and up the talent level in all of our employment so that countries around the world are looking at Middle Tennessee to come in because this is where we've got the education base. And also, I, I feel strongly about supporting our teachers and making sure that those teachers have, you know, teachers have time to teach. And I think I, I can help the board in providing that. So thank you very much. Again, it's Wesley Ballard. And I would be very honored to have your vote on August 4th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. Uh, Mr. Barrett, and then closing remarks that you have, and what, and what makes you the candidate to vote for? Well, when I first ran four years ago, I said I would manage our growth, and I, th I believe we've done that. We've built onto two of our older schools, Hobgood and now Black Fox. Uh, we also converted Reeves Rogers back to a neighborhood school because of our growth, and I think that's been a tremendous asset to that neighborhood. Um, so again, I said I'd help manage the growth. We've done that. I'd like to continue to help manage that growth. And that leads me to my closing statement. And yes, I am Jared Barrett. I'm running for Murfreesboro School Board. I would appreciate your vote. I also encourage the audience and anyone watching at home to come to one of our school board meetings, see what we're doing, or actually watch us online. We're available online as well. Um, come see the good things we're doing. Come see the good work we're doing. And uh, again, I ask for your vote. You can call me anytime, 615-995-6724. And again, Jared Barrett, uh, when, when you go to vote August 4th, I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Campbell, any closing remarks and what makes you the candidate to vote for? As far as being a candidate to vote for, I certainly had the experience, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had 41 years of public education. I have dealt not only as an administrator, but also as a teacher. I've dealt as an assistant principal. I've dealt with many, many students through the years, along with many, many parents. Uh, I am known to most of our school teachers and our school personnel as being a person that is willing to listen. I have had several conversations with teachers and other school personnel, and I have always listened and have always tried to help them solve any kind of problems. I believe very much strongly in parent communication, and that is something that I encourage parents to call or to talk to any board member if you have a situation that you would like to have a question answered, as long as our, as our staff and we listen to them as well. I'm willing to continue to work and to help for the betterment of our school system. We have a good school system. It has been a good school system for several years, but I do believe that it's getting better each year, <clears throat> certainly because of our growth, 
uh, these are things we have to manage. And as Mr. Barrett says, we have worked hard to do that, and I think we have been able to do so. Again, my name is Butch Campbell. I'm on the ballot. I would love to serve as your representative on the Mercer City School Board for the next four years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Uh, Ms. Lilly, any closing remarks and what makes you the candidate to vote for? My compassion for the youth in our community. As a leader, I know how to lead, but most importantly, I know how to listen and follow. I am, um, I value diversity and inclusion. I am a woman of integrity, and my experience will prove to be a valuable asset to the Murfreesboro City School Board. I am Navonda Lilly, a candidate for the Murfreesboro City School Board. Thank you, Ms. Lilly. And finally, Mr. Settles, uh, any closing remarks that you have and what makes you the candidate to vote for? Thank you. I, I think that I'm the candidate to vote for because I have a focus that's going to be on diversity, inclusion, and equality. I want to see our schools to succeed. I think we have a wonderful board now, and I think my addition would only serve to enhance that by offering somewhat of a different perspective or maybe eyes that haven't looked at it before, a fresh set of eyes to solutions that uh, maybe we haven't seen before. I'm uh, an involved community advocate, parent advocate, and I think that's what's essential uh, to help our school board and our school system become even better than it already is. We do understand that parents can contact us and they can watch us and things like that. But I think more even than that is our getting into the community and letting them see us, feel us, touch us, and they can feel more of a part of the system that is already taking place. I appreciate the opportunity to run and to serve this community, Murfreesboro, which I think is the greatest community. I know it's the greatest one I've ever lived in. I love this city. So I want the opportunity to work and to bring what I have to the table to help the board to become even better than what it already is. I'm David Settles. I'm the last name on the ballot, but I want to be the first choice for school board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, once again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters and Murfreesboro Cable, Con uh, Cable Commission, I want to thank the candidates for their uh, participation today. I also want to recognize Alan Bozeman, Communications Director for the City of Murfreesboro, and the Murfreesboro Cable Commission for their cooperation in presenting this program on Comcast Channel 3, AT&T Channel 99, and making it available on the city website. I want to encourage all Murfreesboro citizens to vote. Early voting began July 15th and goes through July 30th. Election day is August 4th. Please exercise this important right to determine who will be on the Murfreesboro City School Board. May we close with a round of applause for the candidates. Murfreesboro, which I think is the greatest community. I know it's the greatest one I've ever lived in. I love this city. So I want the opportunity to work and to bring what I have to the table to help the board to become even better than what it already is. I'm David Settles. I'm the last name on the ballot, but I want to be the first choice for school board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Settles. Uh, once again, on behalf of the League of Women Voters and Murfreesboro Cable, Con uh, Cable Commission, I want to thank the candidates for their